Good day and welcome to another episode of In the Spotlight. I'm Superintendent Michael Richard and today I'm pleased to be joined by two of our principals, Dr. Vito Peron from West Springfield High School and Mr. Peter Gillen from West Springfield Middle School. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. So the audience at home wants to know a lot about the people who are leading our district and our schools. So why don't you tell people at home a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, where you went to school, uh, that kind of thing. Pete, why don't you start? Sure. Uh, I'm from uh, originally from a small town in Connecticut, New Milford, Connecticut. I, uh, I went, to, went to high school there, grew up my whole life there, went to Springfield College right down the road in, in Springfield for my bachelor's degree. I have a bachelor's in English secondary education from Springfield as the captain of the track and cross country team there and stayed at Springfield College for my master's degree. Uh, my master's degree is in education administration uh, and I'm currently pursuing my doctoral degree at uh, William Howard Taft University. Uh, I've been the principal at the middle school for the last four years. Uh, I was assistant principal there for six years prior to that and taught English here at the high school and coached cross country and track here at the high school before taking those positions at the middle school. And uh, I'm very happy to be here today. Good, good. And Vito? I was born and raised in Manchester, Connecticut. Uh, went to East Catholic High School in Manchester. Uh, played football at UMass. Did my undergraduate work there, at least my first stint in undergraduate work there. Uh, went back to school and got a, another undergraduate degree at Central Connecticut State University. Um, did my master's in uh, Grand Canyon University while I was teaching in Carson City, Nevada. I uh, went into prison for 10 years as a teacher, and I earned my, uh, my doctorate there from Capella University. And I've been in administration for 12 years in education for 23. Good. Good. Excellent. So the, the, the start of the educational experience is that student teaching uh, experience. Mm -hmm. So Vito, tell me a little bit about your experience, what you did, and, and really I think what I want to know is how was that impactful on you as, as an educator? Mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for myself, I started late, 28 years old. I went back to school and, and got certified to teach. And I did my uh, student teaching at a small school in Moodis, Connecticut. Uh, really enjoyed working with students, coaching students, and uh, the the person that kind of got me on the pathway uh, to be an English teacher was my English teacher in uh, East Catholic, um, Mr. Murphy. Taught Shakespeare and it had a, a huge effect on me as a young person. I was always an avid reader, but he really uh, dug deeply into the works of uh, of Brit Lit and Shakespeare and uh, brought out the passion I had for literature, and that put me on the path towards uh, teaching English. Good. And how about you, Pete? I was fortunate to do my uh, my student teaching in two locations uh, here regionally: one at Forest Park uh, Middle School in Springfield, Mass., and also at Longmeadow High School, and uh, that was incredibly value for, valuable for me, not just uh, for the experience of teaching, but for seeing uh, very different educational experiences. I did uh, sessions at Forest Park and at Longmeadow High School, both in my junior and senior year of college, and uh, was going to school full-time while, while I did that, and never forgot what it was like for a young teacher to be juggling the graduate work, the you know becoming a new professional and, and working through a new job. And I, I've tried to sort of empathize and relay that compassion as I've grown uh, in this role. Um, but what, what I learned from that is really just the, how tough it can be to be a teacher and how, uh, how consuming and how much uh, time and energy that takes um, to do it well and to do it well with all kinds of varied situations. You know, Longmeadow and Forest Park were two different schools, but the work that was required to do well at those two schools was the same. And that bit I've never forgotten is that regardless of where it is you teach or what it is you teach, uh, the effort required is the same, and, and that's something that I've taken with me as well. And so you, you mentioned the, the hard work that it is to be a teacher, and a lot mm -hmm. of young adults aspire to, to, to this profession mm -hmm. for sure. And um, what, I guess, who was your, your inspiration? I know Vito just mentioned Mr. Murphy in, in, at, at East Catholic, but how about for you, Pete? Was there somebody in your, your, your experience as a, as a student who mm -hmm. really made you think, this is what I want to do? Sure. It was more upon reflection than immediacy. I went to Springfield College originally to be an athletic trainer, uh, and I made it two days uh, and said to myself, this is, this is not what the, my career plan is going to look like. And I sat with my advisor, and they asked exactly that question. You know, where has the impact on your life been? Where are the places where you felt the most connection? For me, it was uh, Mr. Holmes, who was a history teacher in high school, and Mr. Olson was an English teacher. And then uh, as I got into the profession, as soon as I started student teaching, I took my, my first class with Dr. Susan McCarthy Miller at Springfield College, 
I knew this is what I should be doing. This is the right thing for me. It was just, you know, the way that they made learning come alive for me uh, were the happiest moments that I had in the classroom. And that was where the, really what struck my passion is I want to be able to provide that for students and provide that for uh, for a community. And, and that's what sort of fueled my, my passion is, you know, looking back on Mr. Olson and Mr. Holmes' classroom and sitting in Dr. McCarthy Miller's classroom saying to myself, this is what I want to be doing. I want to do what they did. I want to, I want to be up there. It didn't happen immediately for me. It wasn't, uh, wasn't my first calling, uh, but it certainly has been the lasting one. Very cool. And t talk to me, Vito, about, about Mr. Murphy. And so he, he inspired you in, in the English realm. And, and what was it about his teaching style maybe that really made you say, that's, that's something I want to do? Well, the, the challenge when you teach Shakespeare is, is getting past the language and making it come alive for the student. And he really framed the messages, the themes that uh, Shakespeare was trying to send to the audience uh, and, and help people, help students get past the language, which that Elizabethan language is a really difficult thing for modern students to, to get past. But he was able to allow us to kind of dig past the, uh, the barrier of the language, the Elizabethan language, to the words and the messages that uh, Shakespeare often sent comically uh, and at times um, uh, lasciviously to the audience. And that really resonated with, with me and with the, my friends in the classes with me. Very cool. Very good. So as, le as school leaders, let's, let's shift to the work that you're doing now. Uh, school improvement plans are, are written on an annual basis and drive the work uh, that happens in your respective buildings. They have, they're, they're in all of our schools across the district, and, and we've got a district improvement plan as well. But mm -hmm. is there something in your plan that, that you can talk to the, the audience at home about that, that, that they may not know about? Some work that you're doing that you're engaged in that, um, you know, at first blush, the, the, the average citizen may not see or recognize Vito. There's three focuses for us in the school improvement plan, which we work on as a, uh, in the school council, which includes teachers, parents, students. And the focus for us this year is rigor and engagement, expectations and opportunities, and then progress and wellness. So there's really three big buckets that we're working on, but we're working on them from two different perspectives, from the perspective of the teacher and the platforms that we can put in place for teachers to enhance and improve their craft, their instruction, and for the students and how we can bring them to the, uh, the instructional core and how they can engage in learning. So what we're trying to do is come at the, those three areas from the differing perspectives that are in the classroom from the teacher's perspective and then from the student's perspective. And the variability that we see in our classrooms uh, from, from the students is a challenge that we daily uh, need to address. And supporting teachers as they address that variability and engage students in their learning is what we're focused on right now. Very good. And, and how about you, Pete? Similar to Dr. Perone, our process is the same, we're involving the school council to craft the plan, looking at data to to build the plan and, um, and working with teachers and parents and students. The process is very similar. And similarly, we have three areas of focus. Our focus is uh, we're moving towards a, a full inclusion model in terms of our special education work and helping uh, students and teachers adapt to that new model of having a wide range of students all in the same classroom. Uh, similarly, with our English learners, students adopting to a more fully inclusive model as well and, uh, and our new programming and, uh, with that group of, of students too. And then finally, what, uh, what I'd love to highlight for the community because we've talked a lot about those first two uh, is our, our third area is the workshop model of instructional design where regardless of the class, we've spent a lot of time as a building talking about how do we use our instructional time. Can there be some continuity for kids when they go from class to class, especially as that part is new for them in middle school as sixth graders. Is there some continuity in some areas where even if the subject is different or if the classroom makeup is different, that the way that teachers use the instructional time has, uh, has commonality for kids and, and using that in the best possible way. So we get the teachers moving away from that full-scale 50-minute lecture into a lot of group processing time, a lot of student presentation time, and then making sure we wrap it all up and summarize before they leave and make sure you've taken this away from your lesson today. What is that key summarizer? So regardless of the classroom from PE to robotics to math to English in the middle school, the student can see that on the board when they walk in, the teacher knows how to implement that, and it provides a really common thread for teaching and learning throughout the building. Very cool. So um, 
The middle school is uh, is, is 20 years old mm -hmm. uh, this year. The high school is just a couple of months from being five years old, uh, which is pretty amazing in and of itself. But is there something at your building, in your building, whether it's it's the people or the or the physical structure that is the the building, that's unique that you'd love to tell the community about something. Something that, that 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 might someone might scratch their head and say, "Wow, I never knew that." Sure, I, I'll open with uh, our our maker space is something that I'm quite proud of. It was put in last year. It's it's housed in our library. It's been referenced here in one of the sessions of in the spotlight before, uh, where students can come in and 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 go through that engineering and design process and build and plan and fail and experiment in any subject they need. We're always looking for donations. There's a list on our website where students get in and and really tinker with the. Uh, with the curriculum that they're they're set with, and that that space is amazing because it it's it's big, it's messy, it's loud, and it's exactly what learning should look like as we get kids more engaged in the process and turn the learning over to kids uh, as well. It's it's a new piece for us. We'll still we'll still learning how to use it, uh, but it's a really exciting piece for us, not just in terms of the space, but in terms of making that teaching and learning more normalized uh, is something that we're really excited about. Uh, you know, on the other hand of that, I'll, I'll reference some of the people and some of the traditions that uh, are in the, the 20 years of the middle school. We, uh, we have a, a holiday show where at the end of December, our staff puts on a performance for each of the three grades. That's been going on for a long time. And one of my favorite traditions is that uh, at the last day of school, the entire staff uh, will leave with the kids and stand as they load buses and wave goodbye um, as they head out for the summer. Um, and that, that's a, a, a small bit that... Uh, where the staff just get, takes that little extra step to go above and beyond it. Those things have been in place uh, before I arrived, and they're, they're just wonderful hallmarks to the people and the kind of investment in our kids that, that take place at West Springfield Middle School. Excellent. How about you, Dr. Prone, here at the high school? Probably the biggest thing I'd like to share is uh, the, the wall of flags, which is new uh, to the school. It harkens back to the hall of flags um, from the old building, which I, I never saw, but which I heard much about. But what's exciting to me is that there was a, there was a divisiveness in the country um, in 2016 for a variety of reasons. And as we moved into the new school year, the 17-18 school year, uh, there was a, a desire from students and teachers to come together and, and celebrate our diversity and to throw off kind of the, the, the shackles of diversity that or divisiveness that were, uh, that, that were kind of rearing their head in the country, in the news, um, uh, and there is, there is collaboration, true collaboration between students and teachers in, in a, a community forum to find a way to celebrate what brings us together, what makes us uh, one as, as, as we've uh, celebrated um, for a couple years now. And the wall of flags, if you walk into the, the, the uh, high school proper and you, you, you walk past the auditorium, you look up on the wall and you see what makes Westside who we are. And that's the, the students and from the, 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 where they're from and their, their heritage that, that, that is represented so beautifully in that wall of flags. And I think that's what makes me most excited is that our students and our teachers recognize that there is some, some ugliness out there and they wanted to do something together to dispel that and to celebrate the, the, the things that we have in common. And that's really something I would love people to see and to experience here. Yeah, for sure. So you may have answered what, what was going to be my next question, uh, which is, what, you know, what's your favorite thing about working working in West Springfield? You know, you're in year four now mm -hmm. uh, here in Westside. Pete, you've been here for 15, 15. okay, so yeah. 14 years. So, um, but what is that thing? What is What is it that makes you know, West Springfield, the place where you want to be. Sure. I think, you know, when I was a principal in another school in Western Mass, you always heard about West Side and the mystique of West Side. And a lot of times that had to do with the sports teams and athletics. But since I've been here and I've been able to celebrate and recognize the, uh, the students in this school, I, I, I see that it's not just about sports and extracurricular. It's not just about our plays and our musicals and our clubs and activities. It's about the academics and what's going on in the classroom. We had an academic pep rally before the Thanksgiving break, and we were able to celebrate the students and their achievements academically. And I think that's something that I want to remind people about. It's not just about the fact that we beat Agawam, though we did beat Agawam, 
on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> it's about what our students do day in and day out and what our teachers do day in and day out in the classroom to really learn and to grow and to move forward in a positive way. Pete, how about you? I, I'd echo that. I think uh, what Dr. Perone mentioned is, is really similar for me. For What I love most about West Springfield is the people. And at the middle school, it's exemplified in, in lunchtime. It's one of the things that I point out anytime we're you know, given a tour or a walkthrough. Our, our lunches are broken up by grade level. Sixth, seventh, and eighth all eat lunch together on long cafeteria tables that are familiar to many. But what, what's amazing to me is when you walk into that lunchroom, it, it, it's not a divided lunchroom. It's all every kind of culture, every kind of creed, every kind of student, every kind of ability, all sitting around the same table sharing a meal every single day and doing that without any uh, hint of, of it being unusual. It's habit. It's part of the culture and the fabric, not just of, uh, of our school, but of the community and of the values of West Springfield. And uh, I, I agree wholeheartedly with Dr. Perlin, sort of that, that mystique, but that's what I like most about this community is the values that West Springfield has, but also how they're embodied in their kids and how they're embodied in the community and in the schools. It's, it's amazing to see because you can't fake the lunchroom. I say that often. You, you, you can't. Um, but when you walk into the middle school lunchroom and you take a look around at how the students have assembled themselves of their own volition, it's amazing to see uh, how communal that is. And it's, it's the thing that it makes me the most proud of our school, but similarly the most proud to work in West Springfield. Wow. Outstanding. Those are great answers. So um, we're going to wrap up here in a second. And, and the, the traditional final question uh, that, I, that I pose to guests is, who would you like to see featured on the spotlight? So this is your opportunity to tee up somebody that you really want to see sit in the hot seat uh, or an opportunity to really get somebody who someone may not think of uh, here a chance to share what they do, uh, who they are with the West Springfield community. So order doesn't indicate importance. Pete, you're first. Sure. I, um, you know, you mentioned the middle school is 20 years old, uh, and that's, uh, that's a wonderful thing that we've been celebrating this year. I'd be, uh, I'd be delighted to see sort of a mix of uh, teachers sitting together, the veteran folks who have, uh, you know, been at the, in West Springfield for 20 or 30 years, sitting alongside somebody that's been there uh, a year or two. And you just sort of hear and share the two different perspectives as uh, those veteran staff and those new staff sit and talk about what it's like to work in West Springfield, what it's like to, uh, to live in Western Mass and see the, the two different perspectives. I don't have any uh, uh, names off the top of my head of who those two folks are, but that vision of... Uh, uh, of sort of the the history of what we have in front of us, I think would be really neat. No, to it's see. interesting, and I, and I, before I get to to Vito, maybe the idea here could be you've got some staff we know mm. who went through West Springfield yep. Middle School, so perhaps there's a yep. a third group to mix in. There. Sure, yep. We'll see. All right, Vito. So my thought would be my leadership team. I know uh, Mr. Dulet, who is uh, an administrator and an athletic director, has been a part of this. Mm -hmm. So I would think that the the vice principals uh, might be opportune um, guests for you. They, they have been here much longer than I've been here in the school. They bring a lot of experience to, to the table. And they also have interactions with students on various levels that I think might add a, a robust conversation uh, to this, this forum. All right. Sounds good. So I've got some teachers from middle school, some administrators from the high school. Okay. Well, I appreciate uh, everyone joining us for another segment of In the Spotlight. It's been my pleasure today to be joined by Vito Perone and Peter Gillen. I want you to have an excellent day.